You can't do your purpose if they ain't get God to co-sign on it. It won't work like that. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> Welcome back, viewer, to another Iron Sharpens Iron video where we're trying to help you and D from the block stay sharp out there. Get out your first aid kit because today's topic is going to help somebody. Today's topic is the first of a series I'm going to do called Biblical Relationship Goals, Part 1, Your First Love. Biblical Relationship Goals. And of course, if we're going to talk about relationships and a goal, you got to go to your first love. No, I'm not talking about the one that broke your heart in high school. No, we're not talking about that one. We're talking about the one that said before you even born, before you even in the belly, he had a plan for you. It doesn't matter whose belly you were in. You could have been in a crackhead belly. It doesn't matter. He still had a plan for you. Before I go any further, I need you to know that you need love for any real relationship to work. Both parties have to love each other because if you don't love each other, it's not going to work. Love will cover a multitude of sins, a multitude of problems, a multitude of stuff that somebody did and messed up. Yes, it will cover it up. You know what you did last summer, but God still loved you and he still wants you to have a relationship with him. If he did what's right, we wouldn't be here today. Hey man, anybody got any of those testimonies? Oh no, you supersonic saying you lived that good life. Oh, okay. Matthew 22, 37 and 38. I love this. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. John 15, 5 through 6. I am the vine, ye are the branches. You know who this is. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. You got the big basket. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, Jesus saying, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Ooh. So we all know the first and great commandment is to love God basically with everything you got. That's the first and great commandment. Love him with everything, heart, mind, soul, all of it. And then we got Jesus saying in the second part, he is the vine and we are the branches. Without him, we can't do anything. Without God, without that solid foundation, you're not going to make it. You're going to be like the man that built his house on sand, he was a fool, the Bible called him, because the storm came and it just, it ruined everything. So you need to build your house on the rock, the solid foundation, that's Jesus. So the first relationship goal that you should ever work on in life is getting it with God. Yes, this is all, yes, this is it. This is all the videos, this is all, any of the videos, anything on this channel is the only thing that's revolved around. It's not revolved around anything else because none of that stuff is important. It's all temporary. I'm giving you all the tools you need to succeed with Christ. So the first relationship you need to work on is getting it with God. It just makes sense, right? Seek ye first. Okay, so I got to seek God first. So when you get your relationship with God, it's based on obedience and love. Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. So you cannot say, God, I love you, and you don't keep his commandments. For you to show that you love God, you got to be obedient. Did you notice why a lot of people don't accept Jesus? There's a lot of reasons why people don't love God, and they, they, they just disregard the king of kings. It's because... They don't want to be held accountable for stuff that they do. They don't want to obey God. Yes, God loves you. Oh, okay, I can get in heaven. Okay, this is good. And then here comes this standard that you have to live by. And people are like, what? I have to deny myself. I can't watch all the new movies I want to watch and say I love God. I can't get blacked out drunk and make a bunch of bad decisions and still say I love God. I can't get high and say I still love God. Oh, no, I'm going to be a Rastafarian then. I'm going to go get with that. That's why this video only going to get six views. It's not going to ever be trending. This is why God is never trending. It's because people don't want to go after him. They want to be the God of their life. They don't like accountability. They definitely don't like Jesus because that means you have to do certain things to be with him. So they say, oh, I don't want that. Matthew 10 to 38, yo, I think all of this is Jesus. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not what? Worthy of me. John 15 and 14, ye are my friends, if, somebody missing it, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Mm. So before I even get that one, I got to go back. So Jesus said in Matthew 10 and 38, a lot of people, they don't, they don't like this scripture. Jesus said, if you don't pick up and carry your cross, whoever don't do that, he said, you're not worthy of me. Now, who said this? Again, it, is my name Matthew? I didn't say that. I don't write the mail. I just deliver it. I'm trying to tell you, the dude that you say you love, the king of kings, he said, okay, well, if you don't want to deny yourself, if you don't want to stop doing the stuff you want to do, if you don't want to pick up your cross daily and follow me, because you can't do it for two weeks, 10 years to say you love God. You, you got to always do it until you die. If you don't want to do this, then you're not worthy of me. If you're not willing to sacrifice some of the stuff in your life 
for the dude that sacrificed his life, then you're not even worthy of the gift of eternal life. You don't deserve it. See, somebody just left the video. The second part, Jesus says, ye are my friends, if, if, you are my friends, if you keep my commandments. So that means you can't say you're a friend of God if you don't keep his commandments. This is so plain to me. You can't do your purpose and then get God to co-sign on it. It won't work like that. Trust me, I tried. If you're gonna build up your relationship with God, if you're gonna work on that, guess what you need? You need to talk to him, you gotta communicate. Step one is prayer. You gotta get your prayer life on track. But you can't have a prayer life with God and smoke weed. You can't pray to God and cheat on your wife. You can't pray to God and be a homosexual. You can't pray to God and like to lie, cheat, steal, and unforgive, and you, you can't do all the stuff that God said don't do and think you can have a relationship with him. It just won't work. Again, I've tried this. I'm, I'm telling you from experience, it won't work. John 9 and 31. Now we know that God here is not the sinner, but if any man be a worshiper of God, he do what? He do with his will. Him he hear. Psalm 66, 19. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Let me read this one more time. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. See, sin is literally the ultimate blessing blocker of all time. Blessings are always in the unemployment line in heaven because you don't act right. This is why. Not because God hates you or he doesn't want to give you the stuff that you ask for. Because he's a good, good father. He's going to take care of his children. But it makes no sense for him to give you everything you ask for and you're not doing the stuff that he asked you to do. When you're doing sin, when you're living a sinful lifestyle, then you can't go to God and ask you for nothing. He can't. He's not going to hear you. And people know this. This is why sometimes when people do the fool for a certain amount of time, they just don't even pray anymore. They just give up on it. Because, you, again, you can't continue to pray and live in sin. If you think that's going to work, you're crazy. Let me put it like this. If you a kid, right, and you got F's and D's on your report card and you come home and you give that to your parents. And it was at that moment that he knew he messed up. You know you didn't mess up. You know you grounded. You can't get none of the stuff you want. So you're going to avoid them. You're going to stay in the room. You're like, well, uh, I'm going to just be quiet. If you know you have a bad report card, then you're not going to talk to your parents. You're going to try to avoid them because you know you're in the wrong. It's just the same way with God. If you know you haven't lived up to that standard, you know you're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, you creeping in the night doing your sin, then you're not gonna wanna talk to them. And if you do talk to them, you're not gonna get nothing. Let your kids do something they're not supposed to do and they come ask you if they can go outside. You gonna look at them, boy, you doing? 1 John 3, 20 through 24, I love this. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. If you don't feel bad and guilty for all the wrong stuff you were doing, then you can have confidence when you go toward him. Because it says after that, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Yo, this is so plain. And this is his commandment. Look, I love the Bible. That we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us his commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which hath given to us. Man, I love this right here. So this just told us, if our heart don't condemn us, then we have confidence when we go to the Lord. When you acted right, then you feel good when you go to God. You're living a good lifestyle. You're living a righteous lifestyle. You're not sinning all the time. You're not falling for every trick card the devil throws at you. When you go to God, you're like, you know what? I can get what I asked for. You're doing your end of the bargain. He's going to do what he's supposed to do. Elevated to a level that's so high that God said, whatever you ask, whatsoever, anything. If you ask of me, he's going to give it to you. Of course, you got to be in his way. If you ask Jesus cannot fly, you're not going to get that. This part right here is for somebody special. A lot of people tell me, you know what, man? I hear what you're saying. It makes sense. Everything you're saying, it makes sense. The light bulbs are going off, but... I just can't get with God right now. It's just, it's not the right time. It's, uh, I gotta, I gotta get this. I gotta get this. I gotta take care of this stuff right here. And the problem is, we're not thinking correctly. You shouldn't wait to go to God. You should go to him as you are. You don't get in a shower clean. It doesn't work like that. You get in the shower dirty. And then once you're in the shower, the shower cleans you off. So you don't go to God perfect. That doesn't make sense. You're gonna go to God as a homosexual. Go to God as an adulterer. Go to God as a fornicator. That was me. Go to God as someone that likes to kill, steal, you're an axe murderer, you don't forgive people. Go to God as an idolater. Go to God with all of your insecurities. Go to God with your depression. Go with him. Go to him. And then he's going to cleanse you of it. You don't have to get right to get with God. You got
got to get with God and he's going to get you right. Oh, man, they not listening to this. <laughs> Y'all waiting for something deep. I'm already preaching. Greater is he that is in you that is in the world. Like, yo, God is so wonderful. Like, he will literally transform your life. But that's only if you want it. He's not going to force you to be with him. Think about that. If God really loves you, he's not going to force you to be in his presence. So he, he's just not going to do it. So when you die, yes, uh, I had to go here. When you die, if you don't want to be with him, then he's going to continue to let you not be with him. If you didn't want to be with him here, then he's not going to force you to be with him forever. That doesn't make sense. If I love you and you didn't want to be in a relationship with me, I can't just handcuff you to me for 20 years. It don't make sense. If you don't want to be with me, okay, then go be without me. So if you don't want to have God here, you don't want to deny yourself, pick up, carry your cross and follow Christ, then you're not worthy of it. Man, you are, ooh, I know this video is good. Uh, if you learn something, help out your neighbor. Iron sharpens iron. You getting your eggs in a basket, help D from the block get her eggs in a basket. You getting your ducks in a row, help your neighbor get their ducks in a row. All of us, we, we need help, we need some guidance, and we need to have that good foundation. Before you have any other relationship, I'm telling you, that stuff is nice. Yeah, that boy, yeah, that girl, yes, your parents, yes, and your friends, they're all wonderful. I know they've helped you, but did any of them die for you? Let me put it like this, because some people go, you know, yo, he took that bullet from me back in the day. Now I ain't talking about that. Did any of them lay down their life, sacrifice themselves for your sins? There we go. That's the one. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, so we have to be rapture ready. And as always, we are too blessed to be stressed. You have to stay blessed by the best. Can't forget to pray for the rest, though. And until next time. Premium